What prompted them? Why did they reach out? What was their ultimate goal? These are the trolls. It is 1983. The world's population is estimated to be 4.72 billion people. Hurricane Alicia makes landfall in Galveston and Houston, Texas, killing 21 people. Civil war breaks out in Zimbabwe. Under then, President Ronald Reagan's orders the United States invades Grenada in October. NASA's STS-7 mission, a six-day flight for five astronauts on the Space Shuttle Challenger, was considered successful. The Ethiopian famine results in the deaths of four million people. The first mobile phones are introduced by Motorola, and the Mario Brothers arcade game was released in Japan. Return of the Jedi, National Lampoon's Vacation, and Superman 3 dominate the box office. To name a few musicians and groups that were at the top of their popularity during this year, Michael Jackson's Beat It and Billie Jean, The Police's Every Breath You Take, David Bowie's Let's Dance, Duran Duran's The Reflex, Culture Club's Karma Chameleon, Ozzy Osbourne's Bark at the Moon, Lionel Richie's All Night Long, and Bob Marley and the Whalers Buffalo Soldier retains prominence over the airwaves. In July 1983, Christian Weston Chandler was 18 months old. It is around this time that Christian states that his autism had developed. According to Christian's own words from his video, Song of Christian. And anyway, I uh, went on and on with my mouth. That is until the uh, age one and a half years. The sad thing that happened, the Lord clicked the mute button on me. Click, click. That's what my, admit, I'm representing my autism there. The Lord clicking my mute button. Anyway, here's how my autism began. I'm going to be very truthful here. Uh, I had a babysitter, but uh, she was kind of a mean babysitter. Anyway, uh, one day she was on the phone. And uh, I came up, I came up to her, I came over to her and uh, said something, and uh, she was kind of angry at me because I interrupted her phone call. Then she locked me in a room full of nothing, full of nothing but toys, and uh, she just locked me in there. And uh, I was very lonely, so I just sat there and cried, and man, that's how my autism began, thanks to an evil babysitter. The babysitter Christian is referring to is a babysitter in his neighborhood known by the last name Roach or Roach. Little is known about this babysitter save for the aforementioned event and the following list published by Christian on his Facebook on September 3rd, 2013. Roach, Roach, woman, resided in Yellow House on Westwood Drive in Green Lee Subdivision in Ruckersville, Virginia, locked me in a room all alone with nothing but toys, initiated my speech stopping at 1.5 years old. In an email conversation from March 2007 between Christian and his half-brother, Cole Smithy, over Cole resuming communication with Barbara, Cole provides an example that he believes confirms that both Barbara and Robert are unfit to be parents. Cole states, Even in their handling of you when you were a child, left alone every day for years by an unfit babysitter, Barbara and Bob proved themselves to be careless parents. In his November 2007 public announcement, Christian mentions Roach before quickly moving on to his experiences at Nathaniel Green Elementary School. I was diagnosed with high-functional autism, and I lived a uh, somewhat rough life. I've had an abusive babysitter at one time. In an IRC chat from October 16, 2008, user Solarius asks Christian about Roach, saying, Chris, I heard your babysitter abused you. What did she do that was abusive? Christian responded, only locked me in a room, alone by myself, no one else around in the room. In a mumble chat involving Christian, Julie, aka Blue Spike, and Clyde Cash, Clyde starts to discuss Roach. So that's why your parents got me that babysitter to give you the autism in the first place, isn't it? Clyde, I think that's enough. No, I want him to answer this. Okay, Joy. They did not know better about the babysitter. How could they? 
Don't believe uh, that. It's not like uh, they knew the mindset of the babysitter. Nobody knows the mindset of any individual right off the bat. They have to get. To, they have to actually take a real time to see inside them for how good or bad a person they are. And that takes a lot of time and energy. And my mother and father, during my lifetime, saw so much good in me. And, all, and all I have been, and all I've shown for them was a lot of, was a lot of equal good. Some mistakes were made, yes, and I will not deny it, but I appreciate my mother and my father every day of my life. Because without them, I would not be a mainstream, socially acceptable kind of man than I am today. Later on, Clyde asks Christian about how autism manifests itself in people. Okay. Chris, let me tell you something. Where do you think autism comes from? Scientifically speaking, it has possibly come from a drug, or otherwise it may possibly be genetic. Then why do you say a babysitter did it? That's not drugs or, uh, whatever the other thing you said. Genetic. The the, stop. The babysitter locked me in a room by myself. Without anybody else to play with or in, socially interact with. That's just, that's just a real life event that brought out the, the uh, courage that was buried within me from the genetics or the uh, medication. In a mumble chat from February 17th, 2009, one person mentions that Christian was not born autistic, citing Roach. They said, Chris wasn't born autistic. He became autistic when the babysitter put him in the closet. He told us about it before. Chris says, No, I was. I was born autistic, but the babysitter who locked me used that room to bring it out. In a Skype chat with Sarah May from March 4th, 2009, Chris defends his parents' choice to have Roach as his babysitter. Sarah May says, That's why they left you with an abusive babysitter, isn't it? Chris retorts, Never doubt my mother and father. Sarah tells him, stop contradicting yourself. I doubt your very existence. Chris argues they did not know she was abusive until it was too late. The following statement comes from Christian's Wikipedia page dated May 1st, 2009, under the section marked, His Early Years, Birth to 1992. While being babysat by a woman in my neighborhood, whose last name was Roach, she was angry for some reason, so she locked me in a room, all by my lonesome, and it was then at one and a half years of age, I stopped talking. There is one instance where Christian appears to shy away from the Roach explanation in regards to how his autism had developed. When Christian answered questions from Mailbag 12 in December 2009, he received an email from someone posing as Bessarion Yuhashvili, the father of Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin. Bessarion tells Christian that he and his wife, Ketevan, the mother of Joseph Stalin, wished to ask Christian some questions regarding his experience with autism since their son, Joseph, was just diagnosed with autism. One of the questions posed by Basarion is, And last of all, what do you think the cause of autism is? Do you think it is genetic or from environmental factors? Christian responds, saying that autism is not genetic. It comes from a shot the doctors optionally give to the child after birth. There is currently no other available information in regards to Roach. It is 1992. The Balkan War between Serbs, Croats, and Muslims prompts UN intervention. Euro Disney opens up in France. The North American Free Trade Agreement is signed by then-President George H.W. Bush. Bill Clinton is elected president. Bosnia-Herzegovina declares independence. A gas explosion in Guadalajara, Mexico kills 215 people and leaves 1,500 injured. John Gotti, the American Mafia boss of the Gambino crime family is sentenced to life in prison after being found guilty of racketeering and conspiracy to commit murder. Cartoon Network is established by Turner Broadcasting System. Hurricane Andrew hits South Florida in August. 
AT&T releases the video telephone, which goes on sale for $1,499 US dollars. The first nicotine patch is introduced. Aladdin, Batman Returns, Wayne's World, Sister Act, Reservoir Dogs, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, and A Few Good Men are the most popular films of the year. Nirvana, Pearl Jam, R.E.M., Boys to Men, U2, The Cure, Metallica, Genesis, and Eric Clapton command the airwaves. The Oprah Winfrey Show, Married with Children, Ren and Stimpy, Jerry Springer, Law and Order, Rugrats, and Star Trek The Next Generation were some of the most popular television shows at the time. In 1992, Christian was 10 years old and attending fourth grade classes at Nathaniel Green Elementary School, located in Stainardsville, Virginia. Named after Revolutionary War hero Nathaniel Green, the elementary school, and particularly the staff, had a monumental impact upon Christian. Christian first mentions his time in fourth grade during the Song of Christian video from 1998. But uh, before I go, just one thing to say to uh, the teacher. An F in English class? You have got to be kidding me. I mean an F. I did not even know when it was the last time I got an F. I mean, who knows? It could have been back in old Green County. That stupid place. Sheesh. That Green County Primary, actually it was a nice school, but then it came the thing of Green Elementary. That's why I got the F. Anyway, the many years rolled by, and you came along and gave me an F. I mean, I started off with an A, and you just lowered it, lowered it, lowered it. I'm getting sick and tired of this lowered thing. What do you have against, I guess, the handicapped children anyway? I mean, I know my handicap is autism, and I'm not afraid to admit it. And you, Mrs. Bird, I think that F is very disrespectful. I mean, I am very emotional about it. Christian mentions a Mrs. Bird or Mrs. Burns, but no information can be found in regards to either person. Whether or not he is indicating that this teacher was from Manchester High School or Nathaniel Green Elementary School is unclear. From Chris and Sarah's Life Shares, a gift Christian made for his friend Sarah Hammer, he highlights what happened at Nathaniel Green. When it comes to the elementary school, we'll make an exception to the golden rule days, as Chris didn't have too much fun there. In a nutshell, the faculty and school boards did not know how to handle an autistic child, so chaos ensued as troublesome abuse was caused by the faculty to the poor boy. Thus, to keep from further trouble with Greene County schools, Chris had to leave and move to Chesterfield County, and Chris and Sarah's friendship was put on hold. He moved September 1993. According to page 2 of the Autism Papers Intake Survey filled out by Jeff Rayner, MD, on November 5, 2004, there was conflict over where he would have his schooling. The school system or the Department of Social Services had attempted to place the patient in a special school. His parents were very adamant that he be in a mainstream high school. In order to maintain custody of the patient, the patient's father moved them to Richmond, Virginia. Christian was taken out of Nathaniel Green Elementary in September 1992. Christian mentions Nathaniel Green Elementary School in his story of my current days from 2004-2005. My torturing past with the jerks of the Green County school system during the childhood years of my life. In his 2007 video entitled, Chris Chan's Public Announcement, Christian elaborates on his perception of what happened at Nathaniel Green Elementary. And some of the teachers and principals of Nathaniel Green Elementary School, and I was attending, in later years, but uh, late 1980s, early 1990s, they abused me. They abused me by pinning me to the ground with uh, their hand, with uh, holding my wrists and my ankles, pinning me down the ground and and audio taping my cries and shouts. But anyway, my mother and my father, they both fought the court system, the Green County court system, which uh, they were not a very nice bunch of people. Very not, hands down. This indicates that Robert and Barbara Chandler took legal action against the Greene County school systems. Other information indicates that they were unsuccessful, and the case was dropped in 1994. In a mumble chat with Julie, Blue Spike, and Clyde Cash prior to February 10th, 2009, Clyde inquires about why Christian is intolerant of homosexuals. I will not tell you something why you hate gay people. You know my cousin is blessed yet. Yeah. So why do you hate them? Because I just did. I had the bad experiences against, I forget his last name at the moment, 
but he was the principal at, oh yes, Dr. Johnson of the Daniel Green Elementary, the principal. He was, a, he was the uh, homo that pretty much set me against the homos and further kept me on the straight path. And plus, if I was ever a homo, if I was, if I ever, if I would have ever had any attractions to the men, I would be uh, more inclined to associate with them. But I have rarely associated with a man. I feel more comfortable with the women. Chris, and that, is I'm that is a lie. That is a lie. Did you watch the Super Bowl? Christian mentions here a Dr. Johnson. Dr. Bruce Johnson was the principal of Nathaniel Green Elementary School and is notable that, according to the book 101 Stunts for Principals to Inspire Student Achievement by Frank Sennett, Johnson was known for, quote, appearing on the roof as Captain Underpants, a children's book character created by Dave Pilkey, hero of the popular children's book series. The outfit included a red cape, white undershirt, and large white underpants worn over his clothes. Added Johnson, They'll laugh at me out here, but when it comes to being in the office, there's no arguing. In an IRC chat from January 2009, Christian mentions Dr. Johnson and goes in-depth with what Johnson supposedly did to him in fourth grade. Back in my Greene County days, the principal of the Nathaniel Green Elementary School, Dr. Johnson, was a homo, and when I was sent to his office, he picked me up, set me on his lap, then I would always get off his lap because I always hated that. I felt bad vibes back then. Fortunately, it has never gone beyond that, and my father caught his intentions on that, and the court battle started. He likely exaggerates, but my father knew that there were a bunch of homos within that school board, and that was why they hated me and my family, in addition to those people not understanding autism. Anyway, from those past memories, this is why I have grown up to rarely associate with men, and why I despise the homos the worst. A call between Christian and Alec Benson Leary, the creator of Aspergue, was recorded. In this call, Christian tells Alec that he was abused by Dr. Johnson. Actually, yes, I was abused by one. A, a homosexual principal in my elementary school tapped me on his lap, said some offensive, said some offensive things to me, and I felt uncomfortable, so I jumped off his lap and hit on his desk. What did he say to you? I don't remember. I don't remember what he said to me, but they were offensive. On his Wikipedia profile from May 2009, he provides a similar version where he mentions more details regarding the dynamic between his parents and the Greene County school system. Some conflict between my mother, father, and the school system occurred after a physical abuse from five faculty members late in my fourth grade. My parents took the case against the Greene County School Board for a year or two. The board threatened to lock me away in an institution, and my family did not want that. So in September 1992, my family and I moved to Chesterfield County while keeping our Ruckersville home for better schooling. In a phone call between Matthew DeVoria, the father of Casey, one of Christian's later sweethearts, and Christian from November 4, 2009, Christian again recounts the incident he previously mentioned in his public announcement. Yeah, well, how about being pinned down by sleep teachers, a guidance counselor, and the elementary school principal and having your screams and cries recorded on audio tape like a torture chamber. What the hell are you talking a, about? I was pretty much in that situation back during the back in the fourth grade. There what did you do? Have some kind of some kind of, of temper tantrum? Of, no, they were scared of me. They did not understand oh. autism. So what? You just, so you just had some kind of retard panic attack and they didn't know what to do? I it was not a retard. No, it was not. They just hated me because they don't. They did not understand people with autism. And so they tortured me as such. I even ended up with a rash on my neck from that thing, among other things. And we had to fight the school system. They wanted to put me in a mental institution. But that because you need me. help. A list of common questions from the mailbag Christian answers in December 2009 includes one particular question. What are the 10 worst things that have happened to you in your life? Christian says that one of the 10 worst things to happen in his life is number 10. Being pinned down on the floor by a teacher, two teacher's aides, 
the guidance counselor, and the principal on the floor and having my screams and cries recorded onto audio cassette back in fourth grade. A conspiracy has emerged in regards to the events that took place at Nathaniel Green Elementary, which were further elaborated upon by Christian in a video later entitled, Green County Conspiracy. This is Christian Weston Chandler, alias Christopher Weston Chandler, pre-1990 something. Anyway, I, I send this message to all the people that were of the Green County School Board and such during the 1990s because threatening to fund me in a mental institution that was pretty much why we had to run away and move to Chesterfield County and I had a better life over there I had, a lot, I had so many friends over there in high school and I was just sad to leave when I had to I graduated because I had to leave all my friends I had the good life but we were forced to move back here Christian posted a review of Nathaniel Green Elementary School on September 4th 2013 leaving a comment that reads the teachers counselors and principal here back in the early 90s physically abused and attempted molestation upon me mentally and emotionally scarring me for life because they did not understand or care for autistic people high functioning or otherwise it is 1994 tanya harding wins the national figure skating championship then is stripped of her title after attacking nancy kerrigan her rival the Rwandan civil war between the Hutus and Tutsis results in half a million people killed. Serbia continues its attacks on Bosnia. The first commercially successful web browser, Netscape Navigator, is released. Brazil wins the 1994 World Cup. France celebrates the 50th anniversary of the Allied landings. Lisa Marie Presley, the daughter of Elvis Presley, marries Michael Jackson. Kurt Cobain, the lead singer of grunge band Nirvana, commits suicide. The Lion King, Dumb and Dumber, the Shawshank Redemption, True Lies, The Mask, and Pulp Fiction dominate the box office. Alice in Chains, Sheryl Crow, Pearl Jam, Snoop Dogg, Blind Melon, Boys to Men, and Beastie Boys rule the airwaves. Popular TV shows include Law and Order, Rugrats, Beavis and Butthead, Frasier, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, The X-Files, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and The Late Show with David Letterman. In 1994, Christian was 12 years old, attending Providence Middle School. During his time at Providence, he met a young girl named Natasha Turner. Not much is known about Natasha Turner save for the following information. According to Christian's Gal Pals and Past Sweethearts page he created on the Wikipedia, quote, Another girl, slightly older than me, who I felt fond of. I did not meet her until my Providence middle days. We were next door neighbors for a while. She hung out with me at the nearby school bus stop. She was a good girl. In a series of text messages between Christian and his sweetheart Catherine, estimated to be from December 2014, Christian tells Catherine, or Katie, that, quote, I had a crush on her, Natasha Turner. She was a very pretty teen. Then one day, after getting dropped off at home on the bus, she met up with her girlfriends and smoked with them. That was it for me right there, end quote. After discovering that his high school sweethearts betrayed him, Christian began to reevaluate his past friendships, including with Natasha. In other text messages with Catherine, Christian says that, quote, Anyway, I remember that my father was paying her to walk with me and protect me to and back from the bus stop. Katie responded with, Really? Chris stated, It was a major shock to me remembering that. It made me think my friendships might have been a lie. I laid in bed and slept with the shock. Stuck in my dreams, reluctant to really open my eyes to awake. Katie asks, How did you find out about this? Chris responds, I remember my father giving me money and asking me to give it to Natasha as payment for her friendship and attention. I didn't know why at that time, but I know now. Katie says, So he just gave you the money to give to her? Did he tell you what it was for or anything? Chris responds, I don't remember exactly, but I believe he was direct about it, telling me it was like babysitter money or something like that. 